Welcome to Auckland, New Zealand, and this the ultimate travel guide to the city of sales. In this video, we'll talk about how to get here, how to get around, where to stay, where to eat, and what there is to do and see in this remarkable city. If you don't live in New Zealand, you're limited to getting here by sea or by air. Of course, most arrive into Auckland by air and land at the Auckland airport. From the airport, it's about a 30 minute drive into the CBD. Now we arranged a shuttle bus, which met us at 5 a.m. and then took us right into the city of Auckland. Getting around Auckland is relatively easy. You can rent a car, of course, but remember, like the Aussies and the Brits, Kiwis drive on the opposite side of the road if you're used to driving in continental Europe or North America. So there definitely is a bit of an adjustment. Public transport here is good and you can travel by bus, train, or by ferry. If you're using public transport, Auckland offers the hop card. Now we stayed pretty central in the CBD and found that walking around was the easiest way to see everything actually in the CBD. That being said, we also did do a hop on hop off tour for one day. And this gave us easy access to the other areas around Auckland and many of the sites that were not conveniently located in and around the CBD. You will find all kinds of accommodation here in Auckland from luxury hotels, verbos, bed and breakfasts, and all the way down to hostels. Most of the accommodation is central and around the CBD, the Viaduct Harbor, Ponsonby, and Parnell. Now, I wanted a mid-priced hotel when we came into Auckland and close to the CBD with two bedrooms. This wasn't so easy. However, I researched accommodation for many weeks and you know what, eventually I just felt like I was throwing a dart at a dartboard, but we lucked out. We stayed at the Swiss Bell Suites Victoria Park Hotel and my goodness, what a great hotel it turned out to be. It had the two bedrooms we were looking for, the kitchenette, living room, and perhaps the best view of Auckland. Now, I did try to film this video from the balcony of that hotel because the view is just so good. But jet lag got the better of me because I forgot to plug in the microphone when recording that video. The first thing I'll say about food in New Zealand is that we did not have a bad meal during our entire trip. It was all very good. Food in Auckland and New Zealand as a whole is really a fusion of British, Mediterranean, and Pacific Rim. You'll find lots of lamb and seafood here. If you want food that is based on the Maori culture, try a traditional Hongi feast. We ate at several locations throughout the city and found plenty of good restaurants in the CBD, the Harbour area, and also in the Parnell area of Auckland. In fact, my favorite meal in New Zealand was at a small restaurant called Biscuit in the Parnell area. If you like alcohol, well, you'll find some great New Zealand beers. And of course, New Zealand is well known for having some of the world's finest wines. If you want a unique but non-alcoholic drink, try L&P, which is a lemon flavored soft drink. As for cost, you can expect food to be more expensive than in North America and Australia. But remember, when you compare food to North America, here in Auckland and New Zealand as a whole, they're not asking you for a 20% tip at the end of a meal. If you love coffee, like I do, you will love Auckland. We found coffee shops everywhere and the quality was excellent. Maybe not quite as good as Melbourne, but honestly, not that far off. Auckland has a lot to see and here are its main attractions. At over 1,000 feet, the Sky Tower has become an icon of the city and is visible from almost everywhere. It's also the tallest structure in the Southern Hemisphere. If you want a great view of the city and the surrounding coastline, head up the tower. If you feel like walking outside the tower, and who doesn't? Well, you can do that as well. And if you want to jump off the tower, and my goodness, why wouldn't you want to do that? Well, you can. We bought a day pass and visited early in the morning, and then later that evening at sunset. I highly recommend going to the tower. The Auckland War Memorial Museum is one of New Zealand's most important museums and war memorials. The neoclassical building located on Observatory Hill on the remains of a dormant volcano is a great way to learn about New Zealand's history and culture, including its natural and military heritage. 
Waitemata Harbor is visible from much of the CBD and has a lot to offer. You can take a harbor cruise or simply stroll along the waterfront. You will find many restaurants, shopping, the Auckland Fish Market, and the New Zealand Maritime Museum in the area. There is also good shopping on nearby Queen Street. The train station nearby, called the Britomart Transport Centre, is also quite a beautiful train station. A short ferry ride from the city is Waiheke Island. The island is known for its beautiful beaches, vineyards, arts, recreation, and scenery. Rangi Toto is the youngest and largest of Auckland's 48 dormant volcano cones. The island is also considered to be Auckland's most iconic island with a distinctive symmetrical cone. You can get there by a quick ferry ride and when there, the island offers hiking, kayaking, and beautiful scenery. The Auckland Art Gallery houses the most extensive collection of national and international art in New Zealand and is located in a building that frankly I found particularly attractive. Mount Eden is the tallest of Auckland's 48 volcanic cones and offers an awesome view of the city. One Tree Hill is located on one of the oldest volcanoes in Auckland and offers a rich history and stunning views. The Summit Road was permanently closed to private vehicles back in 2018 to recognize the cultural, historical, and archeological significance of the area. Other attractions in Auckland worth checking out include Kelly Tarleton's Sea Life Aquarium, the Auckland Zoo, Pia Beach, which by the way is incredibly beautiful and really iconic, and some beautiful churches, including the Cathedral of St. Patrick and St. Joseph, St. Paul's, and the Holy Trinity Cathedral. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it. And if you're planning a trip to either New Zealand or Australia, check out my other Down Under videos and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. While you're in Auckland, don't forget about the many sites and attractions all within an easy drive of the city. Perhaps the best known attraction outside of Auckland on the North Island is the beautiful and interesting Rotorua. Nearby to Rotorua are the Waitomo Caves and they're about 190 kilometers or 118 miles from the city center of Auckland. The Hobbiton movie set is about 169 kilometers or 105 miles from Auckland. This is only a few of the many wonderful sites on the North Island and all within an easy drive of the city center of Auckland. So there you go, the city of sales, Auckland. If you're heading to New Zealand, don't forget to watch my other videos on New Zealand and Australia.